I'm in a small section of railroad in Cavendish, Vermont, in a man-made canyon that was dug out specifically for the railroad. And it's the location of what became known as the American Crowbar Incident. Phineas Gage was a railroad foreman most remembered for surviving an accident that would have killed most other people and how it affected the remaining 12 years of his life. He had worked with explosives on farms in his youth in mines and quarries, but he was employed here in July of 1848 on the Hudson River Railroad. He was the blasting foreman on the railway's construction. He was considered an efficient and capable foreman, shrewd, smart, energetic, and persistent. On September 13th of 1848, while he was directing a work gang blasting rock, and preparing a section of the Rutland and Burlington Railroad here in Cavendish. The process for setting the explosive was to add the blasting powder, then a fuse. They would then tamp it or pack it down with sand or clay in order to contain the energy of the blast and direct it into the rock. As he was doing this, the tamping iron sparked against a rock and the powder exploded. Because of the explosive and where Gage's head was, that iron was sent directly through his cheek, up through his eye socket, and exited out of the top of his head, taking a vast majority of his frontal lobe with it. Despite the fact it is called the American crowbar case, the iron didn't have a bend or a claw, and was similar to a javelin, round and smooth. It landed about 80 feet away, point first, and smeared with blood and parts of his brain. Gage was thrown back, but was able to speak within a few minutes, was walking with a little bit of assistance, and sat upright for the three-quarter mile ride to his lodgings, and was then seen by a surgeon, Dr. Harlow. Dr. Harlow said that Gage was intending to go back to work within a day or two. At one point, the wound became infected, which Dr. Harlow cut out and Gage recovered almost back to normal. Days and weeks later, Dr. Harlow found that Phineas could remember how long it had been since the accident, but struggled with things like estimating size as well as counting, specifically money. Throughout most of this time after the accident, Gage stayed with his parents and was in fairly good health despite his scars. Phineas Gage was known to be strong, practical, hardworking, energetic, motivated, and honest. After the incident, though, friends and co-workers described him as no longer Gage, and was known specifically to struggle socially. Dr. Harlow was the first to make the connection attributing his accident to the loss of social inhibition, and Gage spent several weeks at Harvard Medical School for analysis about the incident. There, comparisons were made between before and after the accident, and since that time, it's often been exaggerated, saying that Gage became a complete psychopath, but the reality is that his personality may have shifted, but he was still a competent and productive. After his time at Harvard Medical School, he began touring as a living exhibit around New England. That eventually came to an end, and he went back to working, first in a stable in New Hampshire, before traveling to Chile to do long-distance stagecoach driving. The hardship and exposure left him weak, and he moved to San Francisco to be with his mother, who had relocated there. It was there that he began having epileptic seizures, and one that lasted over five minutes eventually took his life at the age of 36, 12 years after the accident. Around six years after his death, Dr. Harlow, who had treated him after the accident, requested to have his skull exhumed for medical research, to which the family agreed. It ended up in Harvard, and since then, it has been the first stop in conversation about the localization of brain functions in neurology how each part of the brain plays a role in human functioning, and how the frontal lobe affects personality specifically. Gage was buried in San Francisco before his headless body was moved to Cypress Lawn Memorial Park in Colma, also known as the City of the Dead. If you'd like to know more about Colma, you can check out my video on that. Thanks for watching, and as always, until next time, get lost.